Tom Brady happened. Here we go. Brady's Bucks hosting the Saints. Second quarter. Bucks are down 3 0. Brady looking for Julio Jones, but Nick, it was just off most of the night. Yeah, I don't know if Julio doesn't quite have the speed or Brady's accuracy was off, but that was a play that needed to be made and they couldn't do it. But Brady can't believe it. It was there. Next Saints possession. It's Andy Dalton. It's Taysom Hill. Saints are out in front. Oh, a little breakdown in coverage. A wheel route. Flat defenders got to carry that wheel. Touchdown. Under two minutes left in the half. It's 7 3 New Orleans. Brady's going to be picked by Demario Davis. Yeah, it seemed like he was telegraphing that pass. Demario dropped right into the lane. A mistake that you don't expect Tom Brady to make. He looks bright. It's 10 3 New Orleans at the half. It's 16 3 in the fourth quarter. Desperation time in the final five minutes. Brady, where do you start? Mike Evans, now they're in business. Yeah, I don't know if you can have something so extraordinary be so boring. We all <laughs> right? knew that it was going to happen, and he did it. Uh, and, and here's the big play. Paulson Adebo with the 45-yard penalty. Is this a good call? Yeah, I hate it as a DB, but yeah, that's a good call. Uh, only thing you couldn't do was give up the big play. You can't let him get behind you. They didn't have enough time to dink and duck down the field. And that sets up this Brady uh, for Kate Otten, the rookie tight end. Buck gets a 16-10. And now the Saints have third and 17, trying to put it away. Taysom Hill just can't squeeze it. Yeah, Dalton was pretty good last night. He had some drop balls, but I wouldn't consider this a drop. Taysom Hill could have cut, caught that and tucked it away, but it's a really good hit. That's Keanu Neal who knocks it loose. So the Saints have to punt, and here we go. Bucks get it back. 58 seconds left. Third and six. Where do you go when you need it? How about Scotty Miller for a first down? Yeah, great conversion right there from Tom Brady. And again, it's so exceptional and incredible, yet so boring. <laughs> because we've seen it before. Here it is. Julio Jones, 15 yards. The Bucks are in the red zone. Then they call a timeout. Then he throws a touchdown to Chris Godwin. But wait, there's a flag on the field. It's a holding call on Donovan Smith. Was this a good call, Dominique? Yeah, absolutely. 100% good call. They could have made a lot more holding calls. Look at this. Quality tackle. Trying. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's your textbook holding there. So they get backed up. Uh, one more chance now. Two plays later. Brady Godwin, a nine yard pickup. There's eight seconds remaining. New Orleans calls a timeout. Third and goal. Here's your ball game. Brady, Rashad White. Touchdown! Yeah, running back in the red zone. We've seen that before in a clutch situation. Nice ball time, Brady. I Three seconds on the clock, and Brady's Bucks find a way to win and maintain control of the NFC South. Brady, 17. New Orleans, 16. Just like we drew it up. <laughs> Just like we drew it up. A lot of games come down to those types of plays. Our guys made them. You know, at the end of the day, our guys made the plays this week. Um, it's a hard hard team to beat and um, you know just glad we won it was a you know they got a great defense they played us very physical like we thought you know we made some mistakes in there but uh, you know we made enough plays in the end to win. Tampa Tom terrific when it matters and so the Buccaneers all of a sudden find themselves. Uh, I'm not going to let you do it Mike again we are going to head down this path where you pretend like the Bucs are actually good football team. They are not. They beat a team in the Saints that gave it away. The Bucs are not scaring anybody in NFC. Tom Brady is incredible. Blah, 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 blah. He can bring you back. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But what about the other 85% of this game? No good football team is going to allow them to do this for a whole game and then be in a clutch situation. Yes, I agree. Everybody will be scared. I was scared last night when Tom Brady had the ball when they were trailing in fourth quarter, but they're not going to get in this situation very often and not play against teams that are as undisciplined as the Saints were last night. I'm going to have a very hard time pushing back against you, but here's the only thing I will say in the defense of Tom Brady. That is that he's going to host a playoff game. Let's just play this thing out. Whoever wins that division is going to host a first-round playoff game, and the likely opponent is going to be whoever doesn't win the NFC East between the Cowboys and the Eagles. That, that's going to be the first wild card. They're going to play the worst division winner. So let's just live in a world where that is Dallas at Tampa the first week of the playoffs. Can you imagine the pressure that is going to be on the Cowboys to go in there and win that game? And if you have Brady, you at least have a puncher's chance, don't you? Did you see how many holding calls that were and were not called last night? How many times Tom Brady was hit by that Saints pass rush? It's a good pass rush. It ain't Micah Parsons.
It's going to be trouble. Like, I don't have any problem. I understand that the Bucks beat them early in the season, but one thing that I think we take for granted is that though the helmets and jerseys stay the same, teams are very different from beginning of the season, middle season, end of the season. Yeah. Once we get to the end of the season, I don't see the Bucks being any better, and it seems like the Cowboys are on an ascent right now. They're much better than they were, and they're going to keep getting better. Cowboys a double-digit favorite in that game? I mean, I, I would imagine they would be, right? Easy, and because it's really both sides of the ball. Dallas is leading the NFL in scoring since Dak's been back. And to Neek's point, that front seven against that offensive line, they'll have no shot. So what uh, Tampa has to hope for, they don't play Philly or Dallas, which is likely, or maybe they get Ryan Jensen back. They're a really good center because if the offensive line doesn't improve, Tom Brady has no chance in the playoffs. I'm just looking. Like, the Cowboys scored 33 points in the fourth quarter. The Bucks have 34 in the last two weeks. Like, like this isn't the same kind of <laughs> yeah. like you, you, you're not going to play a team in the playoffs yeah. who runs four offensive plays. Like, like, you, like this not like Alvin Kamara run into the line on first down and get no yards, and then we'll figure something else out. Like. The Saints have nothing. And yeah. I think the, 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 the response to what the Saints, like the game plan strategy would be in that situation is we need short passes because we can't protect or we need to run the ball. Yeah. They don't have short pass receivers and they do not have an aggressive running game. So I don't see where they find an advantage. The only thing that they can do is try to like stretch, try to shorten this game and get to the fourth quarter and let Tom Brady be magical. But that's the problem is that right now they're only scoring on 10 to 12 play drives. They had two of them in the fourth quarter. But the reason they're 27th in the league in points is that's really hard to do consistently. Okay, yeah. so l let's, let's all admit what is obvious here. And you're not having any trouble doing it, so I'll be the one admitting it. <laughs> Finally. And that is that the Buccaneers aren't very good. Goodness. They are going to win. Oh, they may very well wind up winning what is going to be one of the worst divisions that we have ever seen. That certainly wasn't what this season was supposed to be. Tom Brady is coming off a year in which he had personal career highs in touchdown passes and, and, and passing yards. The week one, they beat the Cowboys. This was supposed to be the best defense or among them in the National Football League. What happened to this team? Why did they go from being so good to being so mediocre this quickly? And how much of it is actually Brady? Yeah, well, I mean, defense is the injuries. I think a lot of it is Brady because I think we were kind of fooled into believing that we were getting vintage Brady because he gave us vintage Brady numbers. In actuality, Brady was being supported by a great offensive line and healthy, outstanding receivers and a respectable rushing attack. When you take that away, you get what Brady is, is like in glimpses, what like all aging superstars are that the hardest thing is not that they can't be great anymore, is that they can't be great consistently. And Brady is still can be great on occasions, but he's not, he's never going to be the guy that can put a team on the back. He knows that. That's why he wanted to get the hell out of New England and get down to Tampa. Do people in the National Football League right now, Mike Tannenbaum, let, let's just say this season is going to come and go and they're not going to go in the Super Bowl. I don't know where Tampa is going to wind up, but let, let's all admit they're not going to the Super Bowl this year. Will there be teams in the offseason who will look at that and say, I'm going to bring Tom Brady in here and we're going to win a championship next year at 46? Yes, because what they're going to do is they're going to replicate what Tampa did two years ago, have a great offensive line, a really good defense, and say, we could plug them in into this situation and it could work. And so, for example, I'll give you two. The New England Patriots, who have a better offensive line than people realize, a couple of really good young skill players. It could be a marriage of convenience for a year with him and Coach Belichick. And the other one is San Francisco. It's a homecoming. They have the best left tackle in football in Trent Williams. They are loaded with skilled players. So I think those two teams actually make sense next year. You know, I watched the New England Patriots play offense on Thursday night, and it made me sicker. And it was almost impossible for me to be sicker than I already was. Tom Brady is going to go play for an offense being coordinated by Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Maybe they make a change there, but my point is, like, both of those, or uh, both sides really could use each other. Tom, obviously, it's probably run its course in Tampa Bay. And New England, obviously, Mac Jones has taken a massive step back. And I think their skill players are actually better than people think. San Francisco was the one that intrigued me, Dan Graziano. How about that? Obviously, the Garoppolo thing is a terrible shame, but he probably wasn't going to be there next year anyway. How, how realistic a possibility does that sound? We always think that about Jimmy, and it, it, it still is. Uh, look, uh, I, I mean, obviously, it depends on Trey Lance, right? Like, they're invested in Trey Lance. They traded a lot to get him. If they believe in him, then I don't know that you do the Tom Brady for one year. Th look, they, they had a shot to bring in Tom Brady a couple years ago and decided to stick with Jimmy G because they had just been to the Super Bowl with him. So I feel like that ship may have set. I mean, who knows? We don't know if Trey Lance will be fully healthy. Uh, it's entirely possible. Can't rule it out. Josh McDaniels, his former coordinator, is in Vegas. That roster probably needs a little work before you could convince Tom to come there. And 
you know, David Tepper in Carolina is desperate to, to, to get a quarterback and make a big splash. Maybe uh, now that you can't do it in Miami, maybe that's the, the Sean Payton, Tom Brady combo package uh, in Carolina or somewhere like that. So, so give me the Neek crystal ball, right? Mm-hmm. So you got, you got three options. You got first week of next season, Tom Brady is A, the quarterback of the Buccaneers, right. B, the quarterback of someone else, C, retired from pro football. I, and and I, doing yeah. the game on Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, Brady, I'll, Brady has a 10-year contract to do. I'll say B. He's a quarterback somewhere else. I think it's run his course in Tampa, as everyone's already pointed out. And it's hard for me to climb into Tom Brady's head. If I were Tom Brady, I'd have quit a decade ago mm. after multiple Super Bowls, multiple MVPs, right. a beautiful family, and lots of money. But Tom Brady, whatever is in him that made him the greatest, that flame ain't going out. And I don't see him putting it out until people stop offering him contracts. And he's given no one a reason to stop doing that. Like he played well enough last night. Yeah. There are lots of teams that are like, yeah, I would love to have him. He's, he's not the 32nd best starter in the league. Yeah. That's for sure by any and, stretch. And if you take that a step further, Greeny, at least a third of the league is going to need a quarterback next year. Yeah. So there will be a robust market for him if that's something he chooses. Would you take him at the Jets? Heck no. Are you kidding what? me? What? No, no way. No? For one season? A 46-year-old Tom Brady next year ahead of Mike White? Are you kidding me? Who is directly on his Oh, you're being sarcastic. Okay, got you. Uh, I see. Ha, well, that's yeah. a joke. Your acting was it too really good. The delivery, <laughs> the delivery was too good for me. It threw me off with the question. Uh, coming up, the full court press for Odell Beckham. Did you see what happened at the Mavs game last night. Is this a done deal? And does he make Dallas the team to beat? We'll answer all those questions. Plus, did you see what the Packers general manager had to say about Aaron Rodgers' future?